guys. Well, today I am going to show you how to make a really awesome, interesting, and unique Christmas gift for anybody on your list who loves to go camping and or has a fireplace or a wood stove or just wants an emergency fire starter. So stick around. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering why in the world am I going to make something to start fires when I live in California wildfire country? Well, in the wintertime, it's not like that. It doesn't catch on fire. In fact, uh, we're actually allowed to even burn, uh, you know, slash piles and things like that. And a lot of us have wood for heat. And um, my friends here are no exception. I have quite a few uh, people that I associate with on a daily basis who are my volunteers at work and uh, just friends of mine who's a lot of times the only source of heat is wood and well sometimes i don't know if you guys have ever had this experience but sometimes starting a fire is a real pain so um i wanted to help them out this year by uh basically making them something that will help them to start a fire more easily possibly and um it's just a fun unique way to um you know wish somebody a happy holiday and to get rid of some old egg cartons like you see back here, that uh, might, as, might have just ended up in the landfill or who knows, might have been recycled, but we don't know. So um, yeah, this is just a really good way to uh, reuse and reduce and all that kind of good fun stuff. So uh, let me uh, show you all the stuff that we need to use and then I will get into showing you how to do it. Okay, you guys, um, so here's some of the stuff you're going to need. You're going to need some type of wax. Um, you can use this household wax that you can get at the supermarket, or you guys can save your old candle ends and remelt them and use them for this. It doesn't matter because nobody cares. It's going to get burned up in a fire, and it doesn't have to be pretty anyway. Um, some type of thermometer, um, either one like this or a candy thermometer would be excellent. Um, a candy thermometer is better because uh, if you do have to do higher temperatures, um, it does go higher. This one only goes up to 220 degrees Fahrenheit, um, but that's okay for what we're doing because um, this type of wax, uh, its melting point is around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius, so you're going to have to figure that out yourself if you live in Europe or Canada or someplace. Um, you're going to need a, a double boiler of some sort, and it could be any kind of nesting pot um, just as long as you have a bigger pot um, on the bottom that you put the water in and then your smaller pot in the top area for whatever it is you're trying to melt. And the reason being is the water will heat up enough to melt this stuff, but it won't allow it to um, reach its smoking or burning point. And that's very important with wax. You don't want to do that. So one of the reasons why wax becomes a candle is because it can be, it's an accelerant and it is flammable. And that is another reason why we are using um, paraffin or any type of wax for our fire starter because it will um, ignite a fire. Uh, okay, and then the next step is you want to have um, some pine um, bedding or some type of wood shavings. I buy these pretty cheap at Walmart, so um, this is why I have this. Um, I use this for my composting toilet, but you can also use it to make um, arts and crafts with, so it's nice and handy to have around. And so I use, you know, this quite often for quite a few things. Uh, I do have another package of it here that's already been opened and um, partially used, so we're going to start with this one. Um, but I just wanted to show you the bigger one because that's you know you can see it better and then we have of course the egg cartons which is a very important ingredient in this uh, mix and then we also have cotton balls okay cotton balls are very important as well um, and you guys will see why later on in the video and always remember too to practice all your safety and all that if you need safety glasses please wear them gloves whatever you got to do um, make sure that you know there's no small children or pets around especially for this project because it can get rather messy and hot wax is very dangerous so anytime you're doing anything with hot wax please make sure the kids and the pets are not nearby unless the kids are old enough to participate and you know they won't won't hurt themselves but this is actually um probably a really good project for some younger people to be able to do but i wouldn't recommend doing it with them until you figure it out first so that you know all the the things that could happen and make sure that everybody is safe 
Okay, so we're going to get down to this. It's going to take a minute because I've got to get the water, you know, up to temperature and all that. Um, and in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, you know, just start making the egg carton parts. And so uh, hopefully this will all make sense here in a minute. What we're first going to do is we're going to get this uh, double boiler with some water in it here. And you don't want to fill it up too high um, because you don't want it to boil over. So you want to probably put, I'd probably say about a quarter of a pot in here um, because you're going to be putting some stuff in the top pot that's going to weigh it down. And of course, you know how water rises when you get it, you know, something heavy in there. And you don't have to do anything special. You just take these. They're, that's why I like these kind of things too. They're pretty convenient. They're in smaller chunks, you know, and you could just throw it right in. You can cut it up into smaller pieces if you like. Um, some waxes that you buy do come in small beads, which make them melt faster and make it more convenient. But that's okay. If you don't have that, that's fine. And just stick it in there. But see how it kind of tips over like that? That's why you don't want like a whole, whole bunch of water in there because you're never going to get control over it. In fact, I probably have a little bit too much water in there. Um, for what we need to do because it's not weighing it down enough um, but yeah you just want to be able to have it kind of floating around in there really I mean because the water is going to protect it from getting too hot um, and so there is that anyway so I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably you know maybe take out a little bit of this water because you got to experiment too because I just bought this pot so I've never used it before um, but yeah, see, that's probably a little bit too much water inside of this pot. And I'll just, uh, put it in some plants over here. That way there's not too much in there. Just poured out a tiny bit. Okay. I think that's going to be a little bit better. Not too much, but a little bit. And what I think we can do is probably, since that's a backpacker's pot, which is really cool and to my advantage, this little handle can hold the other handle. You can't do that with a regular pod. I love backpacker stuff. It's fits in my van and it just serves multi-purpose. And like I say, I've got another smaller pot like this that nests down inside. So if, if I need just a slightly bigger double boiler, then I can use that too, which I'll probably do later on. And there you go. So that's, and then you just start your stove and you don't want to put it on, you know, high, high. You just want to, you know, have it, you know, a reasonable flame. And, um, while we're going to be doing that, um, I will show you the next step. Okay, so I have the pot on to boil, and it's going to take a little while. So while that's happening, we're going to do the next step, which is pretty obvious to you guys, I'm sure. Um, but we're going to fill the egg cartons with the other ingredients that have to be in them. And um, I'm probably just going to do a couple here for the video, and then I will probably do the rest um, off camera. But I just wanted to show you guys how this is done, because... You know, if you guys are out camping and boondocking, this would be a great thing, you know, especially on a, a wet day where, like, the fire just doesn't want to start very well. And not everybody carries a blowtorch with them. You know, I don't. I certainly don't. I probably should, but I don't. But what you're just going to do is you're just going to fill these little egg holders or whatever they're called, the little cavities in the egg carton, up with a little bit of the wood shavings, like so. You know, and you're just going to... I, I think, you know, you don't want to pack them too tight because you got to have room for some wax to, to go down in there. And um, don't be sloppy like Sarah and get it all over your stove either and start a fire because that's not good. Um, and you just kind of do the best you can. They're not going to be pretty. They're not going to be perfect. And that's okay because, like I said, we're just starting fires with these. It's not like they're going to be going in some, you know, I don't know, fancy gift basket or something. My friends, they would be happy if I gave them a stick or a rock for Christmas. So, <laughs> you know, these things are going to make them ecstatic. They just love to know that people appreciate them. Um, that's the kind of friends they are, the kind of people they are, which I really love and appreciate. Um, so they're not too fancy. They're not too proud. And they're, they'll be happy with some funky looking fire starters. And so you just kind of, you know, put all this... Uh, sawdust in here like so and uh, once you get that filled up then the next step is pretty easy um i just kind of want to make them even just so they they kind of i don't know are a little bit consistent 
that's just not too critical, but it is to me. I, I, I just want them to kind of be consistent, at least per carton. And it doesn't take that much um, shavings, which is good because I was not very certain how much I was going to need. So that's why I have a whole nother brand new bag. Um, and then you take your cotton balls. And what you're going to do is really simple. This is like, oh my gosh, guys. Aside from melting the wax, this is one of the easiest things you can make in the whole entire world. You just take a cotton ball and put it on top. Each little egg thing. You just kind of... You know, pretend like they're little Easter eggs. And you just stick them in there. And that's all you do. And hopefully they won't make a big mess when we do this. Because I'm wondering if the wax is going to um, spill over or if it's going to melt in. We'll find out because I haven't made these before. But I... I'm pretty sure that this is how you do it because it's very simple looking to me. And if you wanted to, too, um, you might even want to like tear the cotton balls in half because that kind of looks big to me. Um, these are pretty big cotton balls. Um, they are the jumbo kind. Um, so if you have like the jumbo ones, yeah, I think I'm going to rip these in half because normal size cotton balls, I think, would fit better. But all I could find was the jumbo, which I'm not complaining um, jumbo is good, but yeah, if you just tear them in half, that might be way more than enough. I don't know. So yeah, I'm thinking that's probably better. So we'll just tear them in half and then you can use the other half for the next carton that you do. And you just keep doing this forever. How many cartons that you, um, want to do. And I'm, I'm estimating that these two little bricks of wax that I have in there will probably do a, maybe two cartons at at the very least maybe two and a half three this cotton ball is almost the right size but yeah we could just do that so you really don't need that much cotton and the reason for cotton is it's a good tinder it will um help ignite the fire easier with this and the wax and the cotton you really got a fire starter that's that's for dang sure as long as you don't dilly-dally, you will definitely have a fire if you build something with this stuff, I'll tell you. Because I have used these kinds of things in other applications. Not in the egg carton world, but, <laughs> you know, um, just out in the bush, just starting fires. And I can tell you, anything that's fluffy like cotton is going to take a spark very easily and will help you to ex it light your fire. And then, of course... The next step in the stages, uh, um, I mean, the next step would be the sawdust. And the sawdust gives you a little bit more time, but it goes up pretty quickly and good too. So, yeah, I think that that would be better. You just put a little bit smaller cotton balls in there. So you may not want to buy the jumbos or, like I say, just rip them in half. So we're going to do another egg carton. And then I will, yeah, so I will cut back after I get all that assembled. And then we'll see where we can go from there. Okay, as you can see, the water is boiling, um, and the wax is starting to melt, and you can see down in there, there's still a big solid piece, and of course, we want it all to be melted before we do this, so we're going to have to wait. Um, it's probably pretty close to being at 200 degrees in the stuff that looks like water, uh, but yeah, you just want to check it. You can, you know, um, put your thermometer in there and see what the temperature is. And see how close you're getting if you like. Um, but it's really not that necessary. And I've been doing this for so long now that <laughs> I can tell when it's about ready to go. So, um, yeah, once you get the hang of this, you get to where you can eyeball it. But if you want, you know, just keep periodically checking it and seeing, you know, um, what the temperature is. And pretty soon you'll be able to uh, pour the wax. And just make sure that you uh, are safe and all that kind of stuff when you do it. So we'll be showing you that in a minute. Okay, so I'm putting the thermometer down in here, and this is probably not the best one to use. I do have a candy thermometer somewhere. Um, for my next project, I will be digging it out of my storage unit. I just was there today and forgot all about it. I thought I had it in my van, and I do not. But yeah, see, it's only up to about 140 or so. So it's not quite ready yet. 140 is still pretty dang hot. So yeah, just be very safe when you're doing this. I probably should be using a pot holder. 
but um, the wax is almost there. It's almost there. So yeah. And this wax actually might have a lower melting point than 200 degrees. But yeah, you want to stay under 200 degrees. So yeah, it's usually around 150 to 200 degrees is your uh, melting point for, for most of your waxes. Okay, so we are testing it. I turned it off. I turned off the heat and the, one of the advantages of having a double boiler system is your water is going to keep it nice and warm for you for quite some time and um, that way you can always keep putting your pot back inside of there and warming it up and you do not have to turn the heat back on. Now see it is over 180 degrees Fahrenheit. It's almost up to 200, you know, 20 more degrees and I think that's just good enough. We're not going to be making some precise, you know, beautiful candle projects here. This is just going to be stuff that people are going to be burning in a wood stove. So, yeah, so it's around, I would say, 200 degrees, you know, 180 to 200 degrees is the melting point of this tip particular wax, which is just fine. Um, it's not smoking. It's not burning. It's not doing anything bad. So, yeah, this is what you want. Um, so there you go. Now it's starting to cool off as you can see. So we want to get pouring really fast. So, um, I'm going to put you guys on the tripod and we're going to get to it. Okay. So I'm going to attempt to <laughs> take this thing off of the stove without burning myself. I do have a pot holder thing, so that's going to help. Um, and this is just the easiest part ever. Make sure though, um, when you're ready to do this, to kind of get the water off. So you don't want to um, get this water dripping all over the place. And by the way, all these techniques that I'm just showing you guys are... are you can use these for making candles as well. It's not just for um, fire starters. And you just pour it in. And I want to get it pretty good in here. And you don't want to oversaturate your cotton balls. You kind of want to pour it down kind of next to the cotton ball sort of on parts and I'll explain to you later why well I can s explain it to you now while we're doing this you want the cotton ball to still be able to fluff up if you got it too saturated with the wax it's not going to be fuzzy and the fuzzy part is what makes it to where it um, helps to start the fire so um yeah what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to pour it all around you could get a little bit of the wax on the cotton balls, which is a good thing because it'll help stick it to the wood. Um, but you don't want to totally oversaturate it. You want the wax to kind of just be on the surface of them so that you can tear them open and light them on fire. Because they're kind of like your wick. It's kind of like a candle. It's kind of like your wick. And um, I do know the pr principles behind starting fires. I just have never made this particular thing before. Um, this is kind of a combination of all kinds of stuff put together. <laughs> so this is actually pretty fun. So we'll see how this turns out. And I'm not really sure how much to saturate the wood either because you want it to be able to stick together and still be in there and not make a mess and fall out everywhere for the for the person that's going to use it. So yeah, one, two of those little bricks might not be quite enough for two egg cartons. But it'll be enough for one, I guess. Good thing I have a whole bunch of wax. So yeah, that's cool. I think that'll work just fine. And you just keep pouring until you're satisfied. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to push them down a little bit. Yeah, see, see how much wax is in there. There's quite a lot. You can actually kind of see it coming up. And once they cool off, this whole thing will be just like a candle. It'll be all stuck together. And, you know, and it won't come apart. And I think it will be a really good fire starter. But uh, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm seeing. It's kind of like um, when I smash it down, you can kind of see the wax kind of coming up in there. I guess that's how you know if you have enough <laughs> or maybe too much. Who knows? Um, but yeah, you don't really want to oversaturate, uh, oversaturate your uh, cotton balls. So that's kind of important to not pour them too much of it on top of them. 
Some of them look like they I might have overdid it on some of them, but um, that's okay because you still have the paper to light it. But um, really, ideally, you probably do not want to oversaturate your cotton balls. Okay, these look pretty gross, but I think they turned out pretty good. Um, I did, on this first one, I might have put a little bit too much wax in it because you can see it's pretty saturated. So when you're doing this, you might want to set it down on a piece of paper or wax paper or something so it doesn't make a mess. But other than that, yeah, I think it's been pretty much a success. And see how there's still fuzz on this cotton ball here? You'll, you'll be able to light this and it'll totally ignite and make a very happy way to start a fire. And these things, I don't know, it didn't really stick too well. But I think it'll stick enough to where, like, you know, um, what you do is you take and rip a piece off. You know, like one little egg thing or two, however many you want to use. And then you put that in your fire and then light that on fire is what how it works. And then um, in the meantime, you just, you know, keep it in your egg crate. And the whole thing's paper. Um, and um, you can burn this part too when you're making a fire if you like. So I think it's a win-win. I think it's a good way to reuse and recycle and um, all that good kind of stuff. And you can use old candle ends to do this um, that you've saved up. And um, old egg cartons. So I think this is a very um, awesome thing to uh, to do. Even if you're not going to give it to somebody else, you can uh, do it for yourself. Okay, guys. So that's one of my unique gift ideas for this year. I hope that it might have given you some ideas for maybe yourself or somebody else. And if not, hopefully maybe it was just some entertaining weird thing for you to watch. Uh, thank you so much for watching my videos and tuning in and all that good stuff. And yeah, I guess we'll see you on the next one. Oh, and please remember to uh, hit the like and subscribe and all that kind of good YouTube stuff if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching. All right. See you next time. Bye.